see? Yes. Right. We'll do the same same thing each week to begin with. Looks like you're starting to feel a little bit better. Uh, yeah, a little bit. At, at least in the last like near month since you first were coming out here. Yeah. And uh, like when you that first night that you came out here, I don't think that you would have been moving like that on one foot and sweeping things aside. <laughs> so that's good to see. Good. All right. So let's just go ahead and get our get our wrists warmed up first. They uh, they're the things that that there's so many small bones. And, ligaments in there that, that it's easy for one to get twerked. That's uh, like a twerk your wrist, huh? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. That's what it was. Sure, yeah. We know how you really hurt your wrist. <laughs> I don't know what happened, Doc. I know I had a couple of times on my wrist all of a sudden just had some jerking motion. In years. Maybe somebody would swear. <laughs> swear it was somebody put me in a wrist lock. How was the wrestling event? Oh, it was awesome. It was really, really good. So was it a, was it a, a independent show? Yeah, it was St. Louis Anarchy. Okay. Yeah, we went up to Alton. Okay. And uh, it was really good. It was uh, the match that I looked forward to the most was really, really good. But the match that I, I what it wasn't even announced was like the one that kind of stole the show. And it was uh, Billy Starks versus uh, Evan Delistico. Okay. And it was just a great match. Really? Yeah. Now, I know St. Louis has like at least three decent sized wrestling schools that I know of. Well, the area. I, I mean, I know that that like Peter Harley Martin Race's Martin. place was up in Troy. Um, I don't right? know. Or did he move down to uh, I think it's down in Elden, Elden now. now. Yeah. Okay. So it had been in Troy and it moved to Elden. I think it's that's, I think that's right. I think it's still in Elden, but I could okay. be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's the last I heard, but I don't know. Like after he died, I don't know if, if they kept even, it going. Yeah. Okay. Like I don't know if it like kept going after the pandemic and all that. Gotcha. I know like the big one in St. Louis is mostly St. Uh, is that uh, Team Ambition? Team Ambition, which is uh, David Richards School, which Ish. I have my issues. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we'll take up our stance. We're just gonna warm up with this some light shadow boxing. So. Okay. They're going to be focusing completely on thinking about turning our hips first. There we go. Kind of pivot on the front foot just a little bit if possible. Because that's going to allow, think about it. So I'm like, like that. And let that, kind of let that front foot pivot out just a little bit for you. There you go. And then still straight forward. Boom. Okay. So just back and forth. One, two, three, four. And this is just about getting things nice and loosened up and thinking about moving with our hips I keep trying to, I keep turn, I don't know why I'm doing that so a lot of times it's because we are just over rotating okay. so it would be better to get to about right here than to over over okay. rotate so, so straight forward boom. you got to think about pointing towards my head with each of those punches so you can turn your hip there we go Straight towards me with that one. There we go. Now we can also you can just think about reaching straight up and touching, and that's going to help. Probably you notice how immediately it takes the over yeah. rotation out. So Wing Chun Kung Fu people punch with like a with a just up and down motion right here versus boxing and karate and kickboxing guys they all do that 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 rotation this is harder because we people want to flare their elbows however if you are punching from here it's impossible to flare your elbow when you throw a straight palm strike it follows that same movement that same. and therefore it doesn't cause elbow flare <laughs> and that's why we that's why we warm up with these. Now, staying relaxed in your shoulder is one of the keys to generating snap and power in a punch. Okay. Or in a because it's not until it gets to that end that you lock you kind of lock everything together. Okay. Am I tight in my shoulders? Little bit. So 
one of my one of my instructors used to say it's rocks on ropes. So kind of have that as a mindset that your arms are more like ropes rather than bars. Okay. So so you're kind of thinking about more flicking that that rock out there in the same way. Boom. It's and that'll keep your shoulder from getting tense because you're flicking this out there. Okay. So rotate your everything if you can rotate your shoulders back. You'll feel your. I want you to just stick your arm out in a punch. All right. See how I move, I'm able to move you? Yeah. Now, imagine rolling your shoulders back first and then extending your arm. Okay, so like that. So roll that shoulder back and feel this kind of lock in and then extend your arm out. Okay. Do you notice the difference? Yeah. So try it on the right side. Just lift your, just bring your arm straight up. Okay, now roll, rotate that shoulder back and then lift it up. It's, here's mine. You do it for me. Okay. All right. If I just throw a punch, now you push. Because all of that's loose in there. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate that shoulder back. Okay. So it's right, right in there. And it's, it's, kind of it's like already it. locked in. However, if I, if I disen, disengage it and I just, you're able to push. Essentially, all of my back muscles weren't part of the punch. Okay. And therefore, none of the power is going to be. So when you go on that sort of thing, that allows them, it would be like if you punch somebody and you're all loose, you're going to lose power because you're actually going to be having it come out here. Okay. Versus if you have it in there, boom, you can drive through a person who is, who's coming at you, boom, and you can drive it in. So that's kind of the thought that we want. And especially if we were hitting a person with like a palm strike, if they were coming and running at us and we have that stiffness, that they suddenly hit, you know, it's like running into the end of a of a two by four that was sticking out. Instead of instead of hitting something that is going to slide, it's like hitting it when it's jammed against the wall. And that's okay. kind of how we want to think about it. Okay. Um, today, we're going to start with with um, kind of thinking about how we can put our body into something in order to in order to generate more power. Okay. With, if we we're thinking about with a meeting force on force, say the person was coming in or we're trying to get that person, okay. right before we come in contact with them, we want to be, we want to drop slightly rolling our, our weight forward, okay. kind of like it's like, like if I, if I was in a, in let's say an orthodox Wing Chun stance or something like that, very, it's very squared up, I would want to be essentially just about to where I had to take a step because that's going to allow me to put my force from an angle up and in. And so when I, so if I was going to meet a guy and try and stop him, I would want to be, boom. It's okay. more like a, a wave action coming up underneath something. Okay. Like if water comes crashing down, when it picks a car up, it's not because it came from the front, it's because it came up underneath it and then okay. it's able to flip it. So when I come in, I want you to kind of just relax, lean in, and give me a push back from 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 low to high, okay. but but so rely like, slightly like on me to hold you up for the second that you're pushing. So okay. so kind of lean into your toes just a little bit, get low. Okay. Now 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 in? stand up okay. and push in. Okay. So kind of like like that. Yes. Okay. And it's kind of that popping, boom. Because that will be the thing that, if you look at even at, at a lot of the Japanese lariats, they all come up from the bottom and then through. Boom. And it looks bigger, but it also helps with the lift on that. Okay. Because you're actually getting you're actually getting your hips underneath the other guy's hips. Okay. And when you do that, that's that's getting getting level change is what we call it in wrestling. Because we're in stance, in position, level change, then penetration and the takedown. So they always want to get hips below because that hip pop gets us below center of gravity. Okay. And then we can lift the person much easier because we've now un uncentered them. Okay. So this is going to be a, a drill just to work through that. I'm going to grab this, this pad here. Okay. And 
And as I come in, you're just going to just nice and easy drop down and give me a pop. Into this? Yep. Okay. So am I aiming like straight here? So think about if you're trying to push me about right here, mid chest. Okay. Boom! Okay. Like that? Yeah. Okay. And the more you get that slight rising action, especially if I get in about right here, that's going to, instead of pushing it back into me, it's going to hit and it's going to lift me up and force me back. Okay. Now, once we get to where we were real comfortable and relaxed, and then that person came in and we really go, boom, you're, they're going to go, go sailing. Notice that it's not the first time. I've replaced, I've repaired that part of that wall like two times already. First time was my heel, the other time one of my young students was throwing the dummy and it kicked a hole in the wall. And one more. All right. Relax just a little bit and we'll do another like two rounds of that to get just that feel because if a person's charging at you and you just boom! You could floor them without putting a whole lot of, we want more leverage, no matter how much physical power we put into it. If we're putting our max, our max physical power into it, we also want to make sure that that's being applied underneath the maximum amount of leverage. Again. Make sure you keep your rear foot planted and don't allow it to come up off the ground on you. Okay. Good. That's all good. Sorry. I locked up a little there. Yeah. One more. There we go. So, you'll start to feel when, when I should feel light. If I feel like I'm like kind of heavy, then either the timing was just a little bit off or you weren't getting just loaded up. Because some of those, I feel like I'm just floating off the ground, like, like I'm being picked up underneath my armpits and then just yeah. set down. So that that is how it should feel. Okay. Um, what that does is that that's telling me that you're getting, you are getting that mechanical advantage. You, you're, you're getting underneath and making me have to like roll back up off like a, like I'm hitting a, a loop or something like that. Like in a pinball. So how much of that are you, is you actually jumping? I'm not jumping at all. So oh, okay. so what, what's happening is I'm just being light on my feet. So that if I was, if I just tried to resist and you hit me, you just fall. I'm going to get knocked, I'm going to get knocked down. Okay. However, if I go light on my feet, I can, I, I lead slightly into it. And then I just allow you to okay. pop me up and over. Okay. So. Um, it's just so that we can continue the, because if I was coming in and I got, and I was like running at you hard, I'm probably going to boom and either flip over backwards. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like the break fall in that when I'm coming in, I'm going to go ahead and just get light on my feet and allow, allow everything else just to move me. Okay. So, otherwise that happens. Okay. So getting light makes it where we can reset over and over again. It also keeps me from ending up between <laughs> stuck between two studs. Well, I don't know. Some people pay extra to be stuck in between two studs. Yeah, they do. You know, <laughs> uh, it used to sell really well in, in back in the the sixties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a shame that Cody Rhodes doesn't get up play Captain America. Homelander? <laughs> Homelander? Is that what his name is now? No, that's what. Because Cody can set himself on fire. Oh. And the fans will, still won't cheer for him. Right. So everybody just says he's Homelander. Oh, man. Because he thinks he's a good guy, but he's not. Ah. And Cody knows it. Yeah. He's not stupid. He's not. He's playing it. Yeah. One more. 
Yeah. Yeah, Cody Rhodes, man. That guy. It's like he knows the business, man. He's man, fucking. He's got the. Himself. He's got the look. He's got. He's a. He's a. He's ripped. He's. He's got a good ring presence. Yeah. Is a. Yeah, just a. He's really. If he wasn't wrestling, he definitely would need to be. Action movies of some sort. Right, practice on this, so you can just. You can just. So that's the throat. So this will be the throat. I'll hold it about throat level, okay. and you just. And with, with it. Think about this knuckle right here, but try not to over, like, extend, like, if you turn it out, think about turning your hand a little bit so that this comes in line with this right here. Okay. So this goes, boom. Okay. There we go. Watch, watch your thumb a little bit. There we go. Really snares when I hit you in the face. Good. Yeah, I try. I usually try to watch it. So I'm like, it wouldn't be the first time. There've been times where I've been holding for some people to hit and smack myself in, in the face, and you get like a bloody nose from it. You're like, you bloody nose behind your pants. But no, that's a lesson learned. Don't hold it like that. Thankfully, that was mostly early in my in my career. The earlier you learn those lessons, the better off you are because you're like, oh gosh, don't need to get getting beat up when I'm just holding pads. Yeah, so that's just like, boom. I like to think of it when it comes out. Because this looks, this is even if you're like, hey, 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 uh, I don't want any. And then you come in, boom, you just shoot it out there. Okay. Now, the best is when you know that they are just inside of the range that they won't be able to really rock themselves back away from it. So if you try to launch it just a little bit too early, I might, I might be able to, oh, and it drop back or come underneath it. Okay. This is once we know if a person's in this and they start to pull this number, it's time to hit. Okay. Because what this is, is that they're actually winding up to hit you with their right. So yeah. you just you just plow them. Yeah, just go. Because nothing good happens when someone's in your bubble. Yeah. They may they may go to step back like this, but all that is is them Wind hiding up. up that they're gonna try and wind up and go boom! And that's how if you look at most knockouts on on YouTube and street yeah. fights, they all have because the person's talking and then they go, they look away, yeah. but but they know that they're getting ready to turn around and go, boom, and just hit the guy. Yeah. So, so if you think about it, that's one of those principles of of of, of pro wrestling that is applicable to street fighting. Is that the theater precedes the, the sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Guys out there talking, blah, 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 yeah. good boom! Yeah. It, hey, man, I got nothing to, I got nothing. Yeah. Boom! And then, and then it's on. Yeah. Then whoever gets beat up so that the, the heel can draw just a little bit of heat. Yep. So, it's, and it's, but it's the same way in the street fight. So, the best would be like, if I'm right, boom, there. As you're stepping in, man, follow, boom! Good. 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 Solid. Oops. I Mumble. missed that one. Good. These are transferable. So if you had... Oh, you mean the move? Yeah, they okay. transfer across multiple things. Okay. So if they get in and you hit them with that, you don't have to snatch it right back. A guy your size, if you got low, hit, the, hit me with that, and drove me up, then you'd be able to fling a person at yeah. a pretty good distance. And I've done that, kind of. Without realizing that's what I was doing, I've done that yeah. before. I mean, what's a choke slam? Yeah. But... But stepping in with that same that same drive, and then the yeah. so that's that's essentially where you could go with it. Now, for me, whenever I throw try to work something like that, I'm usually going for like a foot sweep with it because I hit 
hit here uh -huh. and because I'm just not big enough to lift the guy off yeah. the ground with that particular move. If I'm going to lift the guy, I have to get, I have to go up and around. So, and again, that wouldn't be something that I would, that I would do against most people that weren't of uh, near equal size. Yeah. Um, but, but that foot, that foot sweep, I could use on anybody's size because all you really have to do is just catch that foot enough that they can't lift it and stumble and fall. Yep. And then you're on them. So, so that's where it's transferable. It's not going to stop a fight. Most people can get hit in the throat and be like, oh, that is the part where we hit them with the heavier stuff. Yeah. Because when it goes boom and then you swing that hard. And even if they go boom, oh, and then you hit me once here, this one follows back around. And it's pretty fast because it's boom, boom, boom. And three good solid strikes on somebody. A lot of people are like, hey, man, hey, hey, I don't want more. The trick is being the first one to throw them so that you command the situation mm -hmm. and be ready for the tackle. Because they get hit a couple times, but it wasn't enough. They're going to try and yeah. they're going to stop trying to, to swing and they're going to start trying to tackle. Yeah. And once you get... Once your back starts getting a little bit better, I'm gonna, we're going to work right into that so you can hook up the, the defenses against takedowns because if you can't get taken down, then a person trying to sprawl trying to sprawl on them, catching them with a cattle, sometimes they run right, a cattle catcher, it comes up and underneath if I was coming. So, yeah, like that? boom, yep. Okay. I didn't know that's what that was called. Yep, because boom, it, it just shoots underneath there. Okay. So... So you can call a cow catcher for, especially if the person was trying to do like a single or a double, they come in and it just, it's just arms up underneath and okay. you lift them back up. Okay, I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't know that was, that was uh, that, what that was called. Yeah. Okay. Now, some standing technique. I'm going to try this. We're going to see how it feels on the first one. Okay. Um, and if it doesn't feel good, then we're going to, we're going to switch out to something else. All okay, right. So this is the roundhouse kick? No. Yeah, right. It's head kick. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> It's that 720 like Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I've got a bottle over here. I want you to kick the cap off of uh -huh. Jason Statham stuff. Yeah. Eyes closed. Yeah. Cigarette in the mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll say I'm dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. So All right. Okay. So this technique, it comes from, it comes from sumo. Okay. Where if you're going to, you lean in. And then you're going to turn. So if we're wrestling, you had a, a, a right lead. You're going to push in, and when I when I resist back, because nobody is going to let you push. Them. Yeah. Only when people are working out in here for some reason do they start getting all noodly, like you can push them around like this guy. That just doesn't happen. Yeah. People do not want to get pushed back because once you start pushing them back, guess what? They fall down, and then you're on top of them. Yeah. So you push into them, and as they push back, we've got this arm and this. This arm's going to come up underneath and grab here. This one's going to grab this wrist. Okay. We're going to push in and then turn back. Okay. It's not really a shoulder throw. It's more of a whip. Okay. So, so if you think about it, and if... So how did you first get into it? So you just... So you're going to... Let me come on over there. And you can start on me. Oh, start on you? Okay. Yep. So this one's going to have this wrist. This one's going to be up here. Okay. And there we go. And so you're going to push, push in, in. And as I push back, you're just going to throw. Yep. Okay. So this one just turns it out. Push. Okay. And you're going to be standing essentially like this. Okay. This one full pulls all the way through. Till, till he comes right in front. Because this is a kind of a variation on, on our shoulder throw that doesn't require you to take a big man over your back. Sumo wrestlers, occasionally you'll see someone get hit yeah. like that, but they're both just, they're just too big yeah. to, be, to be doing that. So it works across a number of, a number of body sizes because you're, you're giving them a whip rather than a than a throw. Okay. So, wrist up underneath. Push. 
right there. And that's where I should end up. Okay. So, boom. There you go. My fashion of work shorts today. Push it in, grab it, boom. Should I be letting go of the wrist? Let me see. I mean, no, you want to keep control of me because when you throw me here and I push back and then you turn with it, uh -huh. you're going to push, continue, pull, pull with this arm yeah, and pull with this arm at the same time. So these pull through uh -huh. and then when I fall. Yeah, I mean, like when I, like when I throw you down. Oh, no, no. Keep control of the wrist because from here, this will allow you later to keep control of my body. Okay. Um, we'll have a step across or, or we'll get a an arm lock from here. Okay. Because if you let if you let me go, I could end up doing something. Doing doing some I always tie your mask thing where I would just roll out of it and I'm back on my feet again or okay. something. You know? Because I've always hear people always say you always maintain wrist control. Yes. And that's why I'm like, but I didn't know if I should actually be doing that. Yeah. So wrist control, if you've got control of the arm, think of like a police officer. They want to crank that arm around and get behind their back. The same way if you're trying to get them whipped into some sort of ground control for for either sportive or combat purposes. Okay. The more we can keep control of a limb, the less we're going to have to now fight back through to reestablish grips. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're there. Boom. There we go. So we have a nice one. And the more hip that you can give with it. Yeah. I know that probably right now, I'm sure that it, we've only, only got a couple more of these before we're like, okay, let's hold on for Can I try the other side? Yeah. So, so reverse the grip. The grip's here. Uh, and then okay. armpit. Now I'm just trying to, so. And then this foot is going to step in, but then step it out and around behind you. So like this? That's it right there. Okay. Let me try it on this side. And we can go at that speed. All right, so grip, grip. That one feels a little bit better. Okay, well let's go that direction for a while. So. There we go. That, does that feel better for yeah. you? Yeah. Because I'm not bending that side. Ah, much. okay. Because like, even like when I'm doing lunch and stuff, I can do it all day on this side. When I start bending on this side, it's where it's ah. Okay, well then let's work with it. Okay. All right, so boom. I'm still a little limited, but maybe I can a little bit more. And both sides aren't bad. Should I try, when I grab the arm, so mm -hmm. when you come in, so I, am I trying to lift it up? So if you lift up, it's not going to hurt anything in that even if we're right here wrestling and you uh -huh. and you kind of nudge me up and then you turn, yeah. that puts me where I'm not in contact with the ground as much. And the more you can, essentially, the more you can decrease friction, the easier the throw is gonna be. Okay. So if I'm rooted and I'm low and you just try to whip me over, I'm gonna be able to try and resist it. Okay. But if you get me going this direction, then boom, okay. I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna have the choice because my Tippy toes are not enough to, to counteract my hips now being also above yours. Okay. So that same principle, boom. And then you, once you've got it, got me up, you're then taking me kind of on a, a whipping down. Okay. So, boom. And it just whips me right back in front of you. Okay. Oh. You all right? Yeah. I felt my thumb backwards. Oh jeez! <laughs> like, oh, that didn't feel good. <laughs> so you can get, you can get, keep it kind of. There we go. Okay. So you can think about it more, more snatching it, and then getting that grip. Okay. I mean, you can even get it right here. Okay. With a with a monkey grip. So, no, with a thumbless oh, grip. Okay. Because if you're here, and you just are getting the whip, that's fine too. Okay. Thumbs get grabbed, fingers get grabbed sometimes, yeah. and and you'll 
you'll realize, oops, there you go, I need to adjust that grip a little bit next time. I got my finger caught in a gi one time. Oh, guy was like, this big, big man. And he just turned and I essentially got thrown because his mass was so much greater than mine and my finger was essentially tied to his jacket. And I said, oh, geez, I'll lose that finger. Oh, that knuckle was, it was this one. That knuckle was in right years. Oh, no. So just tape and tape it. You, know, you tape yourself together eventually. There you go. into you, you're, you're not allowing me to come in and boom and establish that grip. So as soon as I'm hitting, you're, you're actually moving away from it and redirecting my, my energy. Those are, those can be some of the underrated techniques that you see sometimes, but they, they're effective because you didn't get tangled up, you stayed standing, you hit, I hit the ground thinking that I was going to run into you. And really, you hold that arm and you give a good punt kick. You know, that's usually, I mean, that's good in a lot of MMA fights. So the average person, they don't want to get punt kicked in the head more than once. So, yeah. So, and you don't want to be on video. Yeah. So those are the, those are some of the, some of the, the methods. And boom, and we just rotate them through. And then we crash it, they come to crash in, we capture and then we just turn it out and it allows them to go zip off our side. So that, this set, sets us up for earlier techniques that we talked about. Just you're hitting them in the throat instead of a, a, a palm yeah, underneath. So instead of like that. It's yeah, that. boom. And it, you, could, you could even still step in with it and yeah. send the person flying. All right, so, so remember one is your front arm, two is your back arm, three is the hook, four is a hook. Okay. All right. So three is right, four is left. Yep, okay. for you that would be, because for me, I would be one, two, three with my, three is my front, my front hook. So okay. for you, three is your, is your front hook. Okay. All right, so let's go one, 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 Two this time. Two. Two. There we go. One more. Good. Check it out. One, two, nice and easy. Okay. Pop. I'm gonna. Okay. That's a, that's a pace. Okay. It'll sound like you're counting one, two. Okay. That way. Do you hear it? Yeah. Pop, pop. That sounds like one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right, I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to throw a big right. You're just going to step in and, and stuff it. So with this right here, you're just going to step in right here. So if you were throwing that, that big, boom, it's okay. right here. So like, can you so? If you're swinging it, so if I'm swinging it, I'm just going like that, right there. Okay. Yeah. So just coming inside the danger arc. Okay. 
too many people swing, they want to go back. That's you can't even further. Oh my go. gosh. They miss the first one and then you just get caught with the second because you can't go back enough. Okay. However, if you can stop a if you can stop a ball before it gets in flight, it you're just stuffing it. Okay. Alright. So, so you said one, two, then that. Yep, because okay. it's gonna go one, two. There we go. Okay. One, two. Good. Good. Now, on this one, you're going to go one, two, and when I go to swing, you're going to step in, okay. go ahead and capture using this right here. Okay. So if I'm right here, you can just, and then turn me out just like we were working. So your arms, let's go ahead and go slow over for that pass. Okay. That would be, that'd be one, two, I'm going to throw a big swing, you're going to step into it. And this is going to come up, and this is going to come up right here. Uh -huh. And you're just going to turn and put me oh. on the ground. Okay. So that okay. would be, that would, that's going to be mm -hmm. melding together some of the things that we've been doing. Okay. So we're going to go super slow this first, this first couple, just so you can get the groove of it. Okay. Here we go. One, two, I'm going to throw. And then there we go. Okay. Uh, I caught it under the arm. Is that problematic? So, if you capture it under the arm... Like I did there? That's not going to be so bad because... I mean, if I hit you as hard as I can here, it, it's not going to feel good. Yeah. It's going to feel like you got kicked in the ribs. Yeah. However, most people are going to be swinging like this so much that that they're going to... It'd be more like a hug yeah. rather than rather than an intentional, like, forearm smash. Okay. So, not a big deal. Especially on a shorter guy, it's it's it'd be hard for you to get inside like the and capture it the way that that I would for you because if you're taller than me, I'm gonna hit here and then capture it right there. Yeah. So you can bring your arms a little bit lower to capture it, and then and then just turn through it. Okay. But but think think of when this one comes, you're gonna be coming in at an angle, boom, and that's gonna send you flying. Okay. All right, here we go. Woo! It's a lot like a shoulder bump. Or whatever that, that's called in wrestling. Like a shoulder tackle? Yeah, when they do the boom. Yeah, yeah. right there. So, very similar. You're okay. just adding a turn to it. And instead of me going back off my feet right there, I'm getting sick flying the other direction. So, it's kind of like a shoulder tackle than like a throw. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Much more like a shoulder tackle. Okay. It's just that you aren't meeting force on force. It's more like you're smacking the other side of a door with that shoulder tackle. Okay. You're good. That's why we do repetitions. Seems like you're getting a lot more work out than I am. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the way it goes. Especially especially when you're starting off, it's really important that the that as a coach, you're teaching people stuff that doesn't result in them having to be so banged up that they can't come back the next the next workout and get something out of it. And that happens with a lot of martial arts and it happened with mine. It's the way I used to teach even that, oh yeah, take a ton of break falls before you could start doing any throws or do, doing any techniques. Well, that could take months to get good enough to take a throw. And by that point, a lot of people are either tired of hitting the ground for an hour and going home and sitting in an ice bath or or don't realize that that they're actually building towards 
being able to take bumps. So, but when you're first starting out, I don't mind. I would, it's if you're teaching a grappling art and it's private lessons, as a coach, you best be ready to take some bumps. That's that's all there is to it because there's no one else to take them. You can't. And a person who's coming in, they can't see if you hit them with a with a big throw or something like that. Well, they didn't see what happened. All they know is that they got tripped or were suddenly laying on the on the mat. Yeah. And there, you can learn that way, but it takes much much longer. So. Here we go. Not to try and keep on trying to capture the arm. So we'll go. We'll slow it down because okay. slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Okay. One, two. One, two. Big grip. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Feeling good. Right there. That was it. <laughs> All right. So with that, we try to build as much as we can from one thing to the next. And I don't like to think in terms of in terms of techniques anymore so much. I used to. Uh, Oh, I need to learn this technique, I want to learn this technique. I've shifted more towards concepts. Because then you don't go fumbling around in the toolbox. And that was something that used to happen. It happened to me. It happened to all to my students. Is that it's a bomb! You're right. Is that you get you got so many tools, but you never learn how one flows into the next. And it's like it's like dumping out a a Lego model without the directions. You got all this stuff, it could go together any way you want. You got so many options, you get like decision locked. So what you're gonna find is that everything I do when we're working out in here should build into something or come back. Like you hit this point, it's like a flow chart. Oh, go back to to A. And pretty soon what you find is that you're just, you're going, oh, well I know this feels comfortable. Oh, this feels just like we're here. Oh, boom, and I should give him a shove. Well, I shoved him and he turned out, he's coming in. Oh, boom, I'm turning back around the other direction and putting him in this direction. So our strikes, they should, especially with palm strikes, is that they, they, they melt right into grapples. Like if you, watch, if you watch guys at the Olympic level, when they go to get a collar tie, it's not, it's not like, no, they, I, they smack that guy. Yeah. And it just, boom, on the back of their head, yeah. you know, that game that kids used to play in high school, that, that back of the neck smacking games or whatever. Oh, man. I'm glad I never got involved in anybody because it always looked really annoying. People would come back, but but you're 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 smacking that in there and getting it because you don't want the guy to get away. If you go, hey, I'm gonna put you in a collar tie. Yeah. Not. Can you stand so I put you in a right. pretzel? I'm trying not to hit you, yeah. but but that's not the way it works. Yeah. So these palm strikes really set us up that boom kind of like a, the, I, I like to refer to them as, as a squid's hunting arms okay. they smack out boom and they get a hold of a hold of them because the less time we spend hitting each other the less the less damage we have to do um, so if we can get the guy and we can immediately shut down the, the strikes well from there on out most people regardless of athleticism wrestling is a foreign skill that they're going to try and like just muscle their way through. And the more that we go, oh, no, not, I know you're trying to drop low to pick me up. All I got to do is sink my weight back and then boom, we've got it. So that's where we'll kind of go is just getting that feel, using leverage before strength, but strength always trumps when it comes with all things being equal. So if we're strong, we're going to use it when it's necessary. You know, too often in the martial arts, you're like, oh, you don't have to be strong. You can be you can be a 96-pound weakling, and if you just have enough technique, like false, fake, fake news. <laughs> that's, that's what that is. 
because a man who's 150 pounds fighting a man who's 100 pounds and they both have had an equal amount of experience, the 100 pound man's not gonna go in. It's not gonna make it happen. That's why, that's why you don't see welterweights fighting super heavyweights in boxing. But, yeah, that's why there's- That's why there's weight classes. Yeah. Because if it, was, if it was still open weight, strikers, strikers rarely can contend with the, the extreme upper weights. As far as heavyweight, a middleweight would have a hard time with a heavyweight, even no matter how hard he could hit. Just more mass to suck it up, and the hits that come back are twice as hard. So, so we will make use of it and work again within the confines of of what makes sense for us as an individual to do versus being held by this style. You have to know this this technique, this technique, this technique. So more conceptual, still based around a heavy grappling emphasis. So that's what we got, man. Did really good today. Skate. Skate. Yeah, that's fun.